Hopefully the slides are ready. You're putting that up there? So next up we have Joe from Parody Polkadot. And he's going to be talking about the Polkadot uh, protocol and what's next for parachains. Uh, Parody is a Berlin-based project, so now we're getting to that section where we're going to find out a little bit more about the Berlin side of things. Welcome to the stage, Joe. Yeah, hello. I'm going to talk about like a few things that we're doing on Polkadot and some stuff that's coming up. Um, I, I put in three here, and they all have like kind of this similar theme of like getting removing the bottleneck of transferring messages, whether that's over a relay chain or, or through a single entity. Uh, we want to kind of like push all the scalability stuff to the edges so that we don't rely on like going through a single point. Um, so the first thing I'll talk about, um, this will be actually be the quickest one. Uh, it's a Hermit relay chain. So you know, as you probably know, Polkadot has like this parachain model where there's a bunch of different parachains that are executing around this relay chain. Uh, but the relay chain has its own stuff too. Like, um, in the relay chain blocks, you have these proofs of validity for the parachains, but um, you know the relay chain has its own tokens, it has its own governance and proof of stake stuff and everything. Um, so we actually want to offload like all of that, so that the only thing that's going into the relay chain are these proofs of validity of the parachain uh, blocks, uh, proofs of post. So this uh, I'll talk about next in the uh, cross-chain message passing. So like a proof that you sent a message uh, or that it was delivered. And then misbehavior reports. So obviously, if uh, somebody catches a validator who's kind of up to some misbehavior, uh, that's like a, a first class type of message that should arrive like directly to the, to the relay chain. Um, so that'll be in like one of our next waves of development is just kind of offloading all this logic from the, from the relay chain so it can concentrate on parachain interaction. Um, so the next thing is uh, XCMP, so it's cross-chain message passing. We re recently renamed this from ICMP. Um, and so to put some context around this, um, our relay chain and parachain model and how these can interact with each other. Um, and these are basically like heterogeneous shards. They all have their own state transi transition logic. Um, and so they, you want to be able to send messages across these shards. Um, and how do we allow trust-free arbitrary message passing? And I think it, before talking about like how this actually works, we want to talk about like what does trust-free mean? Um, and it's helpful to kind of compare this to Ethereum. And so like what we did moving from Ethereum to Polkadot was we moved the logic interface from everybody kind of like doing smart contracts in a single execution environment of the EVM, uh, where you can put these like kind of little snippets of logic into interacting with the blockchain's runtime itself. Um, and so making that move it allows you to do much more complex logic, uh, but it also like in order to maintain the trustless message passing, you have to keep some of the same guarantees. And so, like, one of the like, the reason that or the fact that uh, Ethereum smart contracts uh, can send trust-free messages or that, that they interact in the same module, that's what allows them to send synchronous messages, uh, being in the same module. What allows them to send trust-free messages is having the same economic guarantees as the other contracts and accounts that they're interacting with. So you know that these other contracts follow the same validation logic, uh, same finalization logic, it has the same economic guarantees as your own contract or your own account. Um, so there are some like interoperability uh, protocols that have like bridge that are based on bridges. Um, so a bridge is like where you have two chains and they each have their own security models, uh, their own finalization models, uh, their own economic security, and Sure, you can send messages across this bridge from chain to chain, uh, but it, you're still trusting that other chain. So bridge, bridge protocols are trust bound. It's bound by how much trust you have in the other chain. And part of this whole like Web3 and blockchain thing is we want to reduce the trust in like other entities um, and not just like offload it elsewhere. We want this trust to be kind of inherent to make the messages more meaningful. Um, so once we have that in Polkadot, we want to have these messages get passed in a deterministic manner. Um, so this means they will arrive eventually. Um, a message will arrive. If, if it's sent, it'll arrive exactly once, uh, not more. It'll arrive relatively in order. Um, what I mean by relatively here is that within a channel, they will arrive in, all in order, but not necessarily 
parallel channel. So like if I have a channel with chain A and another channel with chain B, and I send chain A a message first, uh, it might not arrive before chain B gets this message because we have like a push-pull model and chain B might actually pull its message first. But if I send a bunch of messages to A, they're going to arrive at A in order. Um, and they will arrive eventually, so it might actually be a long time um, due to how some of the parachains are scheduled, um, but it will eventually arrive. Uh, so yeah, XCMP, it's connection-oriented. Um, it has an interface that looks a lot like TCP IP, so there's uh, connect, accept. Uh, you can set like how many messages you'll allow to have in your queue in a certain connection. Um, and these, so like these, um, connection requests, these actually, these go in the relay chain. So like you make a transaction with the relay chain, hey, I wanna open up a connection with this other chain, it sends the accept message back in the relay chain. Uh, but once you have that connection established, then the messages are not actually getting passed through the relay chain at all. It's, you have kind of like a, a simplex problem, if you're familiar with uh, linear programming. Um, there's a big DHT of how do you find all these nodes, and once that connection's established, um, you can find a route between two different chains. And so this pushes all of this message routing work out to the edges. Um, doesn't have to go through the relay chain at all. It, the relay chain is really only used for channel operations and proofs that messages were posted or received. Um, and so because you have this accept feature, receivers can control their senders. So if you don't want to receive messages from somebody, then you don't have to. Um, and fees get evaluated on these just like regular dispatches. So obviously don't have time to go into that. Um, but in our like weights and fee system in uh, Substrate and Polkadot, um, these get evaluated just like a normal message. Um, so the third thing I want to talk about was trust wormholes and spree. So we have this problem that um, the relay chain's not like it's not acting as a bookkeeper. It's not tracking any balances or information that these messages are being passed. Um, they're all being passed outside the relay chain. So if you want to send like some kind of economic value, you might have to send a message that says hey, I burned 100 tokens. Um, you can mint some on your, own, on your own chain and have those as a claim uh, if you want to get them back at some point. Uh, but we have this problem with this, which is uh, if I'm not running a full node on your chain, how do I know that you actually burned them? And it might not be too difficult to run a full node on one other chain, but when we talk about uh, like composable applications and having a lot of different chains, uh, it's just it's completely pointless to have interoperability if you have to run full nodes on every single chain that you're interoperating with. So um, we came up with this thing called Spree. It's a shared protected runtime execution enclave. So we can all agree on like what messages were sent, but not only, but not always on what their context is. So Spree is, is basically like a module. It lives in the relay chain, so you have one set of logic. Um, but you can instantiate this logic anywhere else. And so, of course, if you create an instance of this logic, it has a hash, and you can kind of verify that this logic is the same logic that's stored on the relay chain. And so everybody kind of stores an instance of this logic, or I shouldn't say everybody, it's actually optional. You don't have to use Spree if you don't want to. Um, but you can imagine like when you send an interchain message, you're going to have um, some kind of like module attached to it. Like, hey, I'm sending this to your balances module, or I'm sending this to your governance module. Um, and what Spree does is it, it almost acts as like a full node on your chain, because Spree will only talk to other Spree instances. It won't talk to another module. So if you want to send one of these messages, then the Spree logic includes a proof that you actually executed what you say you've done. And so it will only send another me send your message to another Spree module. So um, it would almost be like you add a kind of like bubble here that says Spree A and a bubble here that says Spree B. And you're just gonna send the message between the Sprees and then the Sprees will communicate synchronously with their own chain. And so the sender of the message knows that this message will actually be interpreted the way that um, he thinks it will be. So if you say like, hey, mint, if I'm issuing you a command to mint 100 tokens, it's actually going to get executed. And the receiver uh, is guaranteed in, with the providence of the message. So um, you know, Polkadot has this concept of shared security. And with Spree, we have uh, shared code. So you can literally trust the code because you have the same copy of it. And that was it. I think I may have made it under my 10 minutes. <laughs>